Hi everybody, someone posted a question recently about um, biofilm disruptors and uh, whether or not it's important to take antimicrobials at the same time as using that biofilm disruptor or if the immune system can just kind of mop things up on its own, for, um, mop up anything that might come out of those biofilm disruptors. So really good question. Uh, just before I get into the crux of the video here, um, if you like my content, if you don't mind just taking a minute to like or share um, the, the, this video, um, make a comment below if there's something you have to say about it or any questions that you might have for me for uh, topics for future videos. Uh, if you could share this, uh, whatever's appropriate in the medium uh, or social media medium in which you're uh, um, watching this, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so the um, it's a really good question, um, and as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider for that advice. So. <clears throat> It, it really depends. Um, in my opinion, in my experience, um, it's usually a safer bet to work with antimicrobials while taking a biofilm disruptor at the same time, because I just worry about the microbes that are going to come out of the biofilm and they might overwhelm the immune system. Um, unfortunately, with um, these different chronic infections, whether it's, you know, from uh, something like the Lyme disease causing bacteria, Borrelia, or it's a co-infection, or it's a, a biofilm in the gut that might contain uh, yeast or SIBO, or it's mold that's hiding in biofilms in the sinuses or in the airways. The uh, I, I worry that the uh, species that are hiding out in the biofilms are kind of the savviest, maybe the nastiest members of that um, group that you know caused the colonization in the first place, um, and it may be that they're the biggest battle is yet to come uh, when the biofilms haven't yet been cleared out yet. Um, and in clinical practice, it is that is the way it plays out in some cases. Not always, but in, in some cases. So I kind of prefer to have antimicrobials on board uh, for good measure. Um, now, there are some biofilm disruptors that have antimicrobials built into them, um, and that might serve enough of a uh, antimicrobial role to do the, to do the job. So some uh, like a really good biofilm disruptor, a phase two biofilm disruptor is bismuth, um, and bismuth has antimicrobial properties to it. Um, silver is also a phase two biofilm disruptor that has strong antimicrobial properties. Um, ozone is a biofilm disruptor that has very strong antimicrobial properties. But uh, with that being said, um, with the exception of ozone, and ozone isn't a good systemic uh, biofilm disruptor, um, so it's maybe just mention that one for the sake of interest, but not really a clinically applicable one for most biofilms. Um, this is definitely not for systemic biofilms. Um, the, I, I question sort of how broad spectrum some of those um, agents might be. You know, silver I've seen work very well for some cases, but it doesn't seem to knock out everything. Um, same thing with bismuth can be very helpful in some cases, doesn't knock out everything. So my personal approach and preference is to work with um, uh, antimicrobials at the same time as the biofilm disruptor. Now I have had some patients where they're primarily just working with a biofilm disruptor, they're not working with antimicrobials, and it seems to go okay, but that's largely in cases where we're pretty sure that the biofilms have already been dealt with or that there weren't really biofilms there in the first place. Even in those cases, I'll usually recommend that they are working with an antimicrobial agent at the same time, but um, every once in a while it's like, you know, they ran out of their herbs, they're having a hard time getting, you know, a refill or whatnot, or they just really didn't like the taste, or they, you know, misunderstood the protocol, or maybe I misspoke or wasn't clear in some way, and, you know, they thought, oh, I'm just supposed to be on the biofilm disruptor and not the herb, so kind of in hindsight, we see, like, it, it went okay, and then sometimes it doesn't go okay, and, you know, it's like, oh, biofilm uh, disruptor without adequate antimicrobial support on top of that could be, uh, you know, induces a flare, so they need to go on either a stronger protocol or, or, or go on some antimicrobials if they weren't on them in the first place. I suppose if one was disrupting biofilm slowly enough, then the immune system might always be adequate to take care of whatever comes out of hiding, but um, then that's really going to prolong the process, and is it really worth doing that? So thank you for the question. It was a good question. I really like talking about biofilms. I think it's a really important topic. It's not, I think it's becoming more and more uh, recognized in the healthcare community at large, but it's certainly something that's still not you know, nearly as front and center as some other topics. And for chronic cases, it's really, really important to know about. So a great question. And as I said at the start of the video, if you have any uh, other questions about this topic or anything else, just post in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can.